Hi everyone, 2J's here, what up? Uh, so I just I wanted to share another testimony. Um, someone commented on my um, Lion King, Lion of Judah speech, the Christopher Walken speech about the lions that I, uh, that I have on my channel here. And you could tell they're like, oh, I can't, uh, there's all these people out there with this, uh, this delusion that you're not supposed to fear. They try to say things like, oh, don't fear anything but fear itself, or, oh, they'll use scripture like, oh, in, um, God, uh, Second Timothy, uh, God is not, could not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love, and, and, and they'll use scripture, like, out of context to try to, like, prove the point about to speak against fear. Meanwhile, there are many scriptures that talk of fearing God. And then, uh, like how, like, and then there's the scripture how it says, oh, um, anyone who fears is not made perfect in love because fear has to do with punishment and those who are fear punishment aren't perfected in love and this and that. So then, and then he like, so someone posted on my uh, video commenting thing like basically rebuking fear and but what they don't they clearly don't understand so I wrote up a testimony about this and he they sent me a link for this music video uh, by Zach Williams it's called fear is a liar live from Harding prison so like it's nice that I mean that this band is going and they're not you know just like how it's at going to prisons and and doing their best to like you know to entertain, uh, you know, entertain prisoners and things like that, and try to spread the gospel, gospel to the best of their ability of what where they're currently at. But uh, but I mean, the thing is, is like the song is like promoting that fear is a liar, and it's like the problem with promoting with rebu rebuking fear, especially to prisoners, is a lot of these prisoners are probably in jail because they didn't fear God and they broke the law. So it's like, if anything, these, you're to, the prisoners need the message to fear God. So, and the reason why, like, you know, and it's what, it's not fearing God and breaking the law that most likely got most of them there. Some of them get, you know, wrongly convicted and stuff like that. But like, for the mo most part, like people who break the law and end up in prison and things like that, like a lot of them, you know, there's, it doesn't mean that you're evil or anything like some of the some of the greatest people in history have been in prison right like jesus john the baptist uh you know tons there's tons daniel and a lot of biblical characters end up being persecuted and thrown in jail right so it's like but i mean but at the same time there are a lot of prisoners where it's like they're they end up there because they break the law so they didn't have the fear of going against god so i wrote up a testimony in response we must fear going against God to love God. That doesn't mean that we should fear them, God, in His Son, Jesus Christ, but that we should fear going against them in all, including ourselves. To love them, we must lovingly serve them with love, even in our rebuking, in our, in our rebuke. We must even love and serve when we are loving corrected, lovingly rebuked, lovingly, lovingly disciplined, lovingly taught by them and others. We must also love when God chooses us and uses us to do so and lovingly correct, lovingly rebuke, lovingly discipline, lovingly teach others in, in them and for them so uh, for and for all. So it's like, and then so I wrote up this testimony because um, he, because th their song is fear is a liar, and they're saying, like, fear is a liar, and they're, like, rebuking fear and all this, but it's, like, I'm going to point out how fear is promoted in the Bible a lot. Not necessarily, but what they, what they mean in, by it is it's not necessarily fear of God that they're promoting, but they're, they're promoting fear of going against God and Jesus Christ and all his creation. So, fear is a, I say, to saying, to them saying fear is a liar, I say, Fear is a guider. 
So fear is always necessary, useful in serving to us while we are in the world amongst devils, the evils, amongst their evil temptations, amongst the evil temptations of sin, the world, and danger. As a guide to guide us away from sin, evil, danger, and death, fear is a guider. Like, if we get too close to the edge of a cliff, too close to a wild, dangerous animal or danger, fear often kicks in and hopefully is given, received, and kicks in along with common sense, discernment, and wisdom from God to help preserve, protect, and guide us away from death and destruction. We see the fearless zookeeper get down on his knees. Wait for it. Ooh, that's gotta hurt. Crazy thing is, the zookeeper showed off his injuries from previous crocodile mishaps before this fail of a show, including a missing finger. Yes, some people never learn. Fear often kicks in, and hopefully is given, received, and kicks in along with common sense, discernment, and wisdom from God to help preserve, protect, and guide us away from death and destruction to and towards life, the only right way to life, the only right path to life, God, good, love, wisdom, peace, which can be found in his son, Jesus Christ, and the way that he is. So it's like we must fear going against God to love God, his son, Jesus, all others in ourselves. That doesn't mean that we should fear them, God and His Son, Jesus Christ, but that we should fear going against them in all, including ourselves, because that leads to death, destruction, and hell. To love them, we must lovingly serve them with love, even in our rebuke and rebuking. We must even love and serve when we are lovingly corrected, lovingly rebuked, lovingly disciplined, lovingly taught by them, in others. We must also love when God chooses and uses us to do so. Fear of going against God, going against his son Jesus Christ, against others who are not living in God, good and love, and are against themselves and ourselves, is the beginning of wisdom. God loves and delights in those who love him in all, serve him in all, and fear going against him in all. The devils, the evils, don't, and often try to paint fear and fearing of go and fear of going against God as the bad guy, instead of as a guiding light that can and does help save, along with the guiding light that is his son, Jesus Christ. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, but also fear of going against him, until and unless we are sure that we aren't. But even then, it is still important to fear going against him, so not to fall into evil temptations when they come. And so, that when, and so that we repent and change if and when we do fall into fear and those temptations come. Therefore, fear and fear of going against God is and can be a guider. It is written that there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. But that is not instructing us to not fear going against God, which is what we are supposed to do, because it is also written, and fear not them which, them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell which is referring to God, to fear going against God, and yourself.
who can destroy you, your soul, and and your body with your choices, land you in hell, and send you to hell to be destroyed as the result and consequence of them. So fear of going against God, good, love, and ourselves, and others, is and can be a guider to not do so. I'm telling you all this because I love y'all. Live to love, love to live. Shalom. And see, so like the then the the issue, the problem with that of how they say, but but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. So the problem with that is that we are all sinners, and on this earth, none of us are perfect and made perfect in love yet, uh, unless we confess our sins, get baptized, and are forgiven of them, then that love, and of when we're not going against them, drives out that fear, because we know that we're not going against them. But still, that fear, the fear, having the fear of going against God, not necessarily of God and Jesus Christ themselves, because you don't fear them, their, their actual selves, because you know they love us, and their will is good for us. But we fear going against them, so that when those temptations do come, we it, we use that fear of going against them. We don't want we don't want that punishment. So we use that fear to to get us to not go to sin. That's why it says like uh, fear fe uh, fear leads men away from evil and sin. You know, it's cause, so it's like because you don't you don't want the punishment. So it's like so the problem with that is saying like oh the one who fears is not made perfect in love. Well. I'm, like no one's made perfect in love yet because we're among the world and evil and temptations and sin still so we won't be made perfect perfect in love until we are in the kingdom of heaven um, and we're no longer amongst evil and sin and other sinners you know and and like yeah when you're on earth in certain situations like me right now I'm sitting in my home alone so I'm not um, and I'm just you know speaking so I'm not amongst sin right now you know what i mean so i can be made perfect in love and in god right now because i'm in love and god right now because i'm doing my best to serve them and all in love and view you all as myself and as a part of god you know, so i try to help you and love you all in, in love and pass on the word and so to benefit all you know so but we must fear going against god and obey his commandments to love him because devils, the evils, and sinners rebel against God and do not fear God. So because they are not fearing God, does that mean that they are perfect in love and made perfect in love? Simply because they're not fearing God? No. Not until and unless they fear going against God, repent, change, and turn to God through the only way to God through his son Jesus and love them and all others as themselves including God his son Jesus Christ and themselves by doing right and choosing right good instead of evil sin therefore we must love and fear God as we're instructed in Deuteronomy we must fear we must love and fear going against God as we are commanded to and because we are commanded to in Deuteronomy it says it instructs us to love and fear God it says uh, love the Lord your God uh, to uh, f love God and, and to follow his commandments this is the duty of all mankind so and so like if you look at that like you know we're instructed to love God serve God fear God you know in Deuteronomy it tells us that you know, and all through the Bible it tells you to love and fear God. To fear going against God. Not that you have to fear God himself when you're loving, because that's what, that's what it's referring to. So it's saying when you are loving, that t takes away the fear because you know you're doing right. But it's still that still doesn't make sense that those that do not fear are made perfect and love because devils and sinners, the evils, they don't fear clearly don't fear God that's why they're sinning yet they're not made per they're not made perfect in love so because they're not loving God and they're not loving all others as themselves 
So you have to love you have to love God and all others as yourselves and fear going against God and others and others and all and yourselves because that's what leads to destruction and hell. Deuteronomy 10, 12 to 13. What does the Lord your God ask of you but to fear the but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. And I I always I always add the going against God. Instead of fearing the Lord himself, you fear going against the Lord. So, because like there's a there's a difference between fearing God himself, the actual character, he's a loving being, you don't have to fear him if you're loving. And he loves even the evil. He, cho he He's loving the evil and those partaking in evil by still giving us an, an invitation and a way through his son, even though we are sinners. So he's, and he says, he proves that because he says, oh, you have heard to, uh, blow, to what does he say, to, you were told to hate your enemies, but I tell you this, love your enemies. So he's telling you to not regard them as an, as an enemy and love them. So just like he did, so like his and his son. So it says, "What, what does the Lord your God ask of you? But to fear going against the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, to love Him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all with all your heart and with all your soul." Anyone who does not is a deceiver and not of God. Love. So. To point that out because it's clear. That's very clear. So it's like that. It doesn't make sense to, to to claim that. Oh, just because simply because you don't fear, you're made perfect in love. No, because all the devils and the evils and sinners aren't fearing God. Yet they're not made perfect in love. See what I'm saying? So you have to fear and love God to be made perfect in love. So that's the problem with that, where people try to act like. Like you don't need, need fear, and they, they you know they'll say things like, "Oh, the only thing you should fear is fear itself," and things like that. You know, and it's like, no, it, you should fear going against God. You know, that's what will, that's what will guide you and direct you to not sin against yourself, all others, and God. You know, so it's like, so I just wanted to point that out because, I mean, like like I said, like with this video that I did of. Uh, the lion video lion of judah speech the christopher walken one it's like from the pool hall junkies from the movie pool hall junkies so like i don't like to promote uh idolaters and actors and all these known satanists like they're in movies taking the lord's name in vain and stuff like that but time to time i can still use some of the thing some of the content that i come across as a reference to bring it to light and turn it into a light to hopefully lead people to Christ. So like in that video, like I put Christopher Walken, like Christ walk is in his name. You know what I mean? And even though he's an idolater, promotes idolatry, Grammys, uh, going to Hollywood and devils and all that stuff, taking the Lord's name in vain and all that, I can still use a bit, some of that content, bring it to light and turn it into a light to help guide others. So it's like, and some people see it see that video and all they'll see and hear is the fear in it that they'll think i'm fear-mongering when it's like instead of seeing the loving in it the lovingly or the trying to lead people to love so it's like this is i'm not making this video to spread fear of I'm, it's like this is to spread the fear of going against god the fear of going against the lord for the good of all and to love God. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm not putting out videos like that to fear monger. I'm doing it to raise not fear of God and of Jesus Christ, but fear of going against them. So I'm not fear mongering. It, it's like you're, but you're teaching the value of, of fear of going against God, Christ, his creation, others, even going against yourselves is smoking, drinking, hurting yourselves and others, because that's not his will for us. His, his will for us is love, and to love God, Jesus, ourselves, and all others as ourselves. So that's where people aren't getting it. So I just wanted to clarify that. So it's like, this is God's Holy Spirit in me, clarifying and restoring these teachings, using 
you know, this is him using his servant and signet ring for the good and love of all in God, love and good, you know, so it's like, that's what he's doing through me, so it's like, but I, uh, I wanted to point that out, uh, because, yeah, some, there's lots of people, you know, and it's, it's a deception where they're, oh, we shouldn't fear anything but fear itself, and they try to act like fear is a bad thing, when we're told that fear of going, when they say fear of God is the beginning of all, of all wisdom, and, to, and, um, that, that one scripture, right, and it's like, but, what, but, what I am telling you now, and what God is telling you through me, is it's not the fear of God and Jesus Christ themselves that are, that's the beginning of wisdom. It's the fear of going against them that that people should be focusing on. You don't want to go against God and Jesus and others and yourselves because that leads to your destruction. You'll reap what you sow. So you go against yourself and you know you reap you you sow evil. You're going to reap evil and destruction. You sow destruction. You're going to reap destru destruction. So it's like. So that's the thing, so, and it is also written, those who, those who are a friend of the world make an enemy of God. So like the problem with that teaching too, is because the first two greatest commandments are connected, where you have to love all others to love God and vice versa, you have to love God to love all others, they're connected, and you have to view them all, and love them all as a part of yourself, that's what those, that's what Jesus is pointing out, and his example points out, and that's what we're commanded to do, we're commanded, this, like, so to fear God is a commandment, fear, to fear God, to love God, and to serve God, those are commandments, like we're commanded that in Deuteronomy and in the Bible you're commanded to fear and love and serve God and all others as yourself so that so the problem with that is those two main greatest commandments are connected so to love God you have to love all others as yourself and to love all others as yourself you have to love God and Jesus as yourself as a part of yourself as an example of how to love so, because you can't, like, cut God and Jesus from love, God is described as love, and he was in his son Jesus, and showed us love through his son Jesus. So, so, and he showed the world love through, through his son Jesus. So, that's the problem with that, because, obviously, obviously, you know, to love, so it's talking about the actual world itself, not the, not the people. So, it's talking about like you know the system of like evil and oppression so it's saying if you make yourself a, a, a friend of evil you make an enemy of God it's just putting the world in the place of evil in that scripture but really it's like the two greatest commandments tell you to love both so to people and God and vice versa you have to love God to love people love people to love God so and you know friends love one another you know a friend is loving at all times so that's what it that's what it says but like that's why the word friend to me for I I look for family not friends just like how Jesus said uh, you know he, oh anyone who love anyone who loves God is his mother his brother his father his family and it's like I'm not looking for friends Sp friends spells our fiends you take the R out this is our fiends so fiends means demons or addicts kind of thing, you know what I mean? So so I'm not looking for friends, those who are fiends. I'm looking for family, fam, I-L-Y, I love you, fam, I love you, kind of people, you know? So it's like, so it doesn't make sense to be like, oh, you took if you love the world, you don't. You make an enemy of God. No, if you love evil, you make an enemy of God. You ha you have to love the people of the world to love God, and vice versa. You know, so it's like that's literally what we're commanded to do. And His will for us is to love all others, which that's the world, the people in the world. You know, but it's talking about the actual world itself, like materialism and the physical. Uh, like, you know, if you put physical materialism and pleasures ahead of 
ahead of loving people, you know, like more valuable than people when like, like it's like that, that's the thing and that that includes animals too. You know what I mean? And the environment to love all others as yourself. That includes animals and the, and the environment and stuff like that. Like we're supposed to be viewing all as a part of ourselves because they are a part of ourselves. They're existing within us right now. So it's like that's the problem with, you know, wh why the world is isn't getting it's it, it doesn't appear to be getting better all the time, but it appears to be declining when it comes to, like, conservation of, like, a of animals and, and in the environment and stuff like that, because the government that's in place, these satanic beings that care, they're, that care more about greed and the worldly things, materialism and capitalism and stuff like that, they're not, they're put, they're valuing material and, and things like that above people, instead of realizing the connection between between people and our, and the environment we're existing and we're supposed to be one with it so it's like until we until this until humans stop allowing greed to dictate their uh, their decisions in the world to you know go towards capitalism instead of humanitarianism and doing what's actually right for all in the environment then the world's just going to be decline and be under oppression and suffering and under God's wrath because you're just destroying the world so it's not doing what's right so you're valuing you're not valuing and loving others as yourself including the animals and the environment so it's like and that so it's like like on that um I saw like on a plant the planet earth interview of uh I think it was a farmer in Ecuador that they're paying for conservation he's like well, what it comes down to when it comes to locals, you're telling them not to cut down trees, but they have to feed their families. Like you don't understand the their situation, their reality of how poor they are. So like the the issue is pov is poverty around the world because you have oppression. So people you have these gr greedy people who are worried about their quality of life, but they're that they have have no concern for all others. At, because they're not viewing them as themselves, so they don't care about the uh, lower classes and, and their quality of life. Even the fact that there are class systems show that people don't care, they're, they're not caring and loving all others as themselves. Until there are no class systems and you view all people as the same class of human, we're all humans, and we're, so therefore we're all in the same class and race, human race, it's not like black, white, Chinese, this and that. We're all the same race. We're all the human race. So it's like until people can cross those barriers and, and see that it's like, yo, we're all one. We're all supposed to be one because we're all alone. All one. It spells all. A-L-O-N-E. One. You put a one where it says one. It says a l one a one one a l l all that can be spelled from alone so and so like the guy the, this conservationist said like oh if you were you when if you were put in a position where it's like to cut this tree would you would do you cut this tree down or let your kid go hungry you know it's do you feed to feed your kid that's your that's these what the options coming down to do they destroy their environment to produce economy and funds for themselves to feed their families or do they conserve the environment so that's the that's the choice you're trying to give to these locals and stuff when when they, but the issue is is when you make that choice to chop down that tree to feed your kid you don't understand that that tree is that tree being alive and thriving is feeding your kid oxygen and feeding the whole planet oxygen and energy from the sun so it's like so our children's future depends on those trees functioning properly so so it's like yeah you cut it down you may think that you're serving but that you're short term you're thinking in the short term so you're feeding them for a time until that forest is gone and destroyed because it takes hundred it can take hundreds of years to to grow trees and things like that so that can't be replaced overnight so you know so the so you're not being aware of the long-term effects so the choice the proper choice would be for people to not be forcing people to destroy the environment in order to feed their families and and, and combat poverty 
So you need to provide more creative, positive, healthy ways for people to function in society to be able to to function in society so that they're not starving to death and their families aren't dying. So it's like, but it's a way that they appear to be trying to control population is keep them down, keep them down, and then we'll keep the population down. But you don't realize it's like, so there some of their solutions will be like. Oh, um, we got to get the population down to 500,000 to one point, uh, 1.5 billion. I think the planet could sustain that amount. Where it's like, yeah, well, some of these solutions, their solutions are like, what, kill off 80% of the population? Like, get it down to 500 million at 1.5 billion, although it's already at like 6.5. That That's no, that's not a creative solution. That's, that's, you could be, so, so then they so then what happens? They go to war, they res resort to war, genocide, poison people to kill them to get the population down. It's like tricking people into killing themselves, you know what I mean? For, for resources and stuff like that. Meanwhile, they do that, you could be killing off in that late, in that 80% of people, you could be killing off the, the, the scientists, the very scientists that God chooses to give the next generations the solutions to some and the technologies to some to these issues you know what i mean so it's like you know what i mean so it's like if if oppression comes in you're like, like for me me for instance someone comes towards me and they're like oh kill him he's not benefiting society blah 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 and they deem you as that and as dis expendable like oh then but then if god chooses me to give this th these solutions then you just literally rejected the solution that so it's you know the, the, so you're doing unnecessary violence and genocide against people who could be the very ones that God chooses to to save you from these problems you know what I mean and not save you because Jesus saves so but but you, you see what I'm saying that he passes a solution that could lead lead to solving problems you know what I mean so so that's that's the issue with people right now so they really just need to make wiser choices in resource management which is which is basically means that you need to, the, the main issue is combating poverty so until we don't allow greed and greedy dictators and capitalists to be dictating what to do with the environment and resources because they're clearly they've had hundreds of years they're not making the right choices clearly they're still like we can drill for oil in Alaska, like, and we can make a very small carbon footprint, we think, and we can get that oil. That's another temporary solution, because, like, that, you know, there's more cleaner, healthier energy, and they claim that. They're making claims that they're not backing up. Look what happened to the Gulf of Mexico. One accident. Humans have accidents and mistakes, so boom, all of a sudden, oil destroyed. Massive amounts of the, eco of the ecosystem and environment destroyed because of one human error or one technology era where you know the pipeline bursts or whatever you know what I mean so you can talk the talk and claim that but you're not walking the walk and it's easy to you know talk is cheap you can claim that all day but you gotta walk that and you gotta come up with positive more long-term solutions and clearly some of these choices are destroying the environment you know at the expense of the environment for money so they're placing money in the value of money as master over quality of life of humans and people you know what I mean and people do it with animals too where they'll be like oh I love animals more than people the Bible instructs you to not throw the bread to the dogs if there's a starving child you know it says shame on you you like these animals are you not more important than than these than a, a large amount of sparrows you know what I mean like it said like they instructed that animals are under our stewardship so you're not supposed it's Jesus and God in Jesus made it very clear to that you're that, to love animal that we are more important human lives are more in, not are more important than animals lives they they're given to us we're supposed to be their stewards and take care of them and be their shepherds and use them and what God provides to them like milk and uh meat and stuff like that you know we're supposed to use those to our benefit and to benefit the environment and those animals you know what I mean so it's like and we don't always you know animals die of natural causes and things like that too so we can be there's nothing wrong with eating 
eating meat and animal animals and stuff like that you know what i mean and farming and things it's like but what the the issue is is clearly that people are oh i love animals more than people well, that's not what you're instructed to do. You're instructed to love all others as yourself, which includes animals. So you're supposed to do your best to be a good shepherd, a good farmer, a good producer, a good steward for those animals and for the people. So, you know, that's why it's, it says that. So it's like, so people need to start thinking long term about, because they're not the ones who are making those greedy decisions to choose and choose money and in, and over people and money over these animals and the environment aren't realizing the direct connection between our very our species very survival relies on being good stewards and to all other people and ourselves and animals and the environment you know you don't you can't destroy the environment you're living in and expect that it's going to provide for you that's ridiculous you know what i mean like that's oh let's let's chop this apple tree down and then assume that it will provide us apples. Like, how stupid are you? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you chop a tree down, those apples are gone. It takes hundreds of years for it to grow again, you know, or however many years, 20 years, like 100 years for a tree to grow, blossom. That's why, so the solution is to be using renewable woods for building things, such as bamboo grows, what, three feet a day in tropical areas and things like that. You know what I mean? So you, we got to come up with more creative sol solutions in managing our resources and the animals and the people you know by combating poverty and closing the gap of oneness through love of God and love of all others as ourselves and those commandments so if we don't do that and people choose to keep being greedy and thinking of only their quality of life they appear to be only caring about their quality of life really they're not even caring about their own quality of life because to do so you have to realize and come to the revelation of the direct connection between you and the others that are existing in you and the environment that we're all sharing and in right now and instructed to share and love right now so that's a big issue that we're facing as a species you know and it's like until we get proper leaders to start making some wise choices and realize that yo you cut that apple tree down you're not going to have apples you know what i mean you cut those you cut the farmland down you're not going to have food so and you're not going to have farmers to do that work <laughs> so it's ridiculous to think that you can do one and still have the other you know like you can chop things down but still have and have it and thrive it's ridiculous so you need to people need to be coming up and the only way to come up with those cre the creative solutions and the answer is God and Jesus through there. That's why it says Jesus is the only way to life. Because if you don't follow that, that way that God gave us and shows us of love all others as yourself and love God and Jesus as yourself, and if you don't follow those commandments, then you aren't going to be viewing all as yourself. So there's still conflict and and division there so you're not working together with the people and tools that are at your and the environment that's at our that we're exposed to and is that we're in supposed to be thriving and living in and using to our advantage so you know like and for mutual mutual benefit we can mutually thrive together that's the whole goal like if my neighbor su suffers I suffer also, you know, if my neighbor thrives, then I thrive also, you need to go borrow some bread, they got that bread for you, you know what I mean, so come, but not if they're not loving, you go ask them to borrow bread, they don't, they refuse to borrow bread, even though they got a stock house, and you got tons of bread, and you got, you got none, you just because the current positions that you're in at the moment, and you know what I mean, then what good is that 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 neighbor is not loving you, you as themselves you know what i mean so it's like and then if they they run when they when they go are down and run out of bread and you're thriving and they come ask you for bread you know what i mean then you know what i mean if you're it's it's supposed to be a mutual mutual relationship between each other that's that's the whole point of relationships like in a marriage or a friendship it's supposed to be mutually beneficial to both to all the parties involved that's or else what's the point 
that's not a relationship that's just oppression and you know master and slave and that's what they're they're people need to get out of their heads of like masters and slaves you know what i mean where and where it's like yo we're supposed to be thriving equally and as each other as each other so that doesn't mean that you're a slave i'm the master that means that we're both servants of each other we all serve each other that's why it says in the bible this those who serve will be considered and teach the commandments will be greatest in the kingdom of heaven so so what it comes down to is what it comes down to is until we stop allowing money to dictate our actions and be instead of using money as a means to control people and motivate people into working and to thrive people need to use the you be use love and god to bridge that gap to be our motivation to realize the connection between us all that we're all existing in the same world same reality and we are all re therefore all relying on each other to thrive and serve each other to help you know because it's like one guy damages the environment over here that damages the same environment that we're all supposed to be sharing and you know using to thrive so you got groups of people who aren't understanding the connection the direct connection between us all through love and god and the environment and that we're existing in so the separateness is there so they think that they 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 go under the delusion that they can thrive by being wicked and greedy when it talks about it says god like god will cut off the wicked and greedy because they're not helping him thrive they're not helping his people thrive so it's like wicked rulers get destroyed things like that and wicked the wicked go to their destruction because they're it's like it's like devils they're cho they're choosing they're, they it's like it doesn't make any sense why you wouldn't want to thrive and all to thrive it's like it's like a it's like the captain of a sinking ship and they're just trying to drag everyone down with them kind of thing it's like what good is that that's not what god created us for so that some can be greedy in the moment and do their best to think that they're thriving and be delusional thinking they're thriving when they're really not you know what i mean so that's that's what appears to be happening so until people make you know can view god and god as our our servant and us as god's servant and us as everyone's servant and everyone as our servant on that because we all do in love serves each other so like what god chooses and does serves all what we choose for others when we when we love that serves all so it's like until we do that and view them all as ourself as a part of ourself they're existing in our mind and to, to hate them is to hate you to love to oppress them is to oppress you to you know to uh, to love them is to love you to love god jesus and all others is to love yourself because it's connected we're all connected so like that's the problem with with the, with the world is the is the evil they're lacking perspective on connection on the connection between us all and the importance it's like you it's getting to the point it's going to get to the point where it's like you're not you can't you can't choose you're going to be able, you're going to be put in a position where you're all it's already getting there where it's like choose the right thing or die and everyone will die what so you have to change your ways or you're going to die whether you like it or not and so are your children and all and the future generation so it doesn't make any sense it's just like you're it's like you're just dragging people down with your stupid decisions and yourself so it doesn't make any sense you know what i mean that what you're choosing so it's like and money is something that we create we print it it's made of like you know paper or whatever so they're just using it as a means to, of control at, uh, over people so that they're the rulers and you worship them because they have all the money so the lender is above the borrower and blah 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 all that crap pardon my language again but it is crap it's like you know like you print this stuff there's this earth provides so much for us there are so many creative things and energy sources and things that people aren't tapping into yet you know what i mean like so as pe as the population evolves technology evolves along with it to adapt you know what i mean and god can provide 
tech, new technologies and new ideas through the very humans who are you're oppressing and and trying to kill like you know what I mean and killing with your stupid decisions and your stupid stewardship and government so it's like it doesn't make any sense you're it's like you just need people need to come to the revelation of realizing the connection between us all including God and Jesus and view all and God and Jesus as ourselves a part of ourselves and love them all as a part of ourselves and serve everyone and all as a part of ourselves because we're all existing in each other's minds and hearts and realities and world right now we're sharing this all this is all shared reality shared thoughts shared everything so you need to cut that division and greed in order to thrive and realize yo these this environment the, the polar caps are melting because people are so are so set in their ways of burn oil burn oil burn oil burn oil that's the like that's the only solution like you know what i mean that's the only oh we found like it's like they find something that makes them money in a greedy way and they just gotta get as much of that resource as possible until it runs out but you don't realize every single day that you got billions of cars out here pumping this stuff into the environment it's affecting our air quality our water quality it's melting polar caps the oceans and the waters will rise you know what I mean and that's why we're seeing floods and so all these crazy storms and stuff like that because you're not realizing the effect of your decisions on the environment around you you know what I mean so it's like when people make good choices where it's like instead of money if we had solar cars and different creative solutions free energy sources and things like that and we weren't also focused on money 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 society of money and rich people and poor people and all this division and all this nonsense when the world clearly has the resources and potential resources and potential ideas and technology for us all to thrive as a one as a one as a one people one race one group of servants for each other you know what I mean so until we come to that revelation through the spirit that God gives through his beings and servants such as myself and all others that serve and love and God then until we take to that the wicked are going to be destroyed and the good are going to thrive just as the Bible says because you're leaving God no choice you're not choosing right so God's like yo this person's not serving in love pointless you're oppressing people boom smite it death for that person and we'll put a next person who does want to choose right in position and it just is like so it's like you're constantly just battling yourself like instead of helping and serving yourself properly so it's like and, and serving God and Jesus properly because you're not viewing them as you and as a part of you. You're viewing them as like a separate being that you have to be uh, against and battle and uh, like their side, our side. It's like there's no, it's always divided. Like it says, kingdoms that are divided fall. You know what I mean? So it's like we're in this environment. It, we're all supposed to be in the one in one kingdom you know what i mean of like service and thriving and th things like that so it's like what it is coming down to is we got greedy greedy people who are focused on what they want to be rulers over people instead of being servants with them and that's what it comes down to so i mean anytime they get caught in their wickedness they throw out a distraction like oh gotta get this vaccine now Oh, we got caught with a pedophile island and all these rich people are connected to it so time to like distract people and cause a panic of their financial situations and make them worry about what's priority to them uh, over stopping the wicked rulers uh, let's go to, so then they distract you oh put out a man-made virus or oh put out this and stop them from being able to open up their businesses to distract them they're getting traction going in the right direction so we got to throw distraction and take away that traction of them arresting us and stopping the wickedness and going in the right direction and stopping pedophiles and blood drinking and all this stuff and wickedness. So it's like, that's what they do. It's just a tactic. So it's like literally until people are like, yo, are you people not like, how do you not get it? Like how, even like the wickedness, like it's like they do, they must get this. You must understand. You have no choice. You're, in, you're, you're relying on the very choices and environment and people that you're around to serve you you're we're relying on the environment that we're in to serve us and benefit us and to do so we have to serve and benefit it 
and we're relying on the people around us to serve us. So for them to do so, we have to also serve them. It's not a, it's not a we can serve them, they can serve us, but we don't serve them. That doesn't work. It has to be mutual. Everything has to be mutually beneficial for things to function properly. It's like if you have an, a closed system, you can't, you can't have the battery die and then have the, have the machine work. You know what I mean? So you got these, the people, you view the people as the batteries, like how they say in the matrix, and it's like, oh, well, these people, your world is just like a battery. And then, but the function, then the world is the machine and the system that we're in. So it's like, you can't take away the batteries and have the system function. And that, or, and that's why they're always constantly putting out ideas like that, like trying to build like robots and replace people with our intelligence so they don't have to rely on the, those people as the battery and and then it's like but that doesn't work because machines don't machines need maintenance too so they don't you don't have the technology to wipe out a large amount of people and still function properly so that's why they're constantly trying to improve technologies and this and that instead of people you can see that like they're more concerned about sending a person to the moon discovering next place to next planet to go destroy with their their de-evolved thinking instead of using the very resources that God provides that are right in front of us that we can walk out our door and go use. So it's like, it's like, why are you going to, an, trying, you're trying to find something that's not there instead of properly use what is there. That's what humans are doing because, and it's like, it's nonsense. So until people like can realize it's like, it's like that's why movies like the matrix and things like that when they put it forward it's like if it's like yeah if you create these intelligent machines artificial intelligence and they get to the point where they're like yeah these people we're smarter than these people they're destructive we're not they could literally they could like like the matrix they could try to rule and take take you over out of out of just basic logic and common sense look these people are destructive we're not we're we're more efficient they're not so why, why do we need them? They need us. You know what I mean? And then, boom, that's why what happens. You know what I mean? Then you got, a, then you got a basically a society of robots. <laughs> no one living and enjoying. So it's like, you literally, it's like pe people's, that's why it's like your tools become your actual tools that you're trying to use can become weapons against you kind of thing. So it's like really what we have to do is use, the, use our tools in the environment that we have, at, that we have to properly serve and benefit and thrive together so it's not it's not it doesn't take it doesn't take genius to do that you know what i mean it just takes love in your heart to and perspective to view and love all others including god and jesus and yourself as yourself everyone you know, view everyone as yourself like, it's like that's the, that's why so love has to be the driver and guider but also fear of going against god jesus all others and ourselves because that's destructive so let's start doing that you know shalom much love like i'm not against any of you i'm here to try to thrive you know what i mean it's like what does that make me an enemy of i'm an enemy of god because i want to help and love the people around me because i love the, it's like oh you can't be a friend of the world and love god what do you mean? You told us that we have to love people to love God. That's the two greatest commandments. So why is it trying to co contradict? That contradicts saying that you can't love the people in the world and, like, and, and love God instead. You're supposed to love them all. You're supposed to see God in these people, love in these people, and through these people. And you're supposed to, you're supposed to be witnessing that God and love are in these people and can be in these people and we're all supposed to view each other as ourselves and love each other that's the commandment so it doesn't make sense that they're trying to act like you can't you have to love god one or the other like you have to love people or love god that's not what it's saying it's talking about the world itself and it's like and even but even that doesn't make sense because that's the environment that we're relying on that god provides for us to thrive so we're supposed to be loving the world and loving god so that scripture doesn't make sense because to love God, you have to love His people and what and the earth that He provides, the environment to, that He provides for us. 
or we're not going to thrive and we're not following his commandments so you have to love god and love the world love god by loving the world love the world by loving god you can't separate those that's why those are the two commandments picture the world as the se second greatest commandment picture god as the first greatest commandment love the lord your god as yourself love the world and all others as yourself they're connected put them together so you're supposed to love god and the world and all others as yourself that's the commandments so you can't try to act like they're always trying to keep those two separate, like people and God are always against each other, but it doesn't have to be like that. We're all supposed to be serving in the kingdom. Um, it's, it's not, it's not too hard to figure out people, but like, it's like, that's the thing. So I hope this, I hope this compels you to see the reason in what I'm speaking about right now and the spirit of love behind it to try to help everyone thrive because money doesn't matter in a situation where our lives are on the line. You know what I mean? It goes out the window where it's like, you know, it's like, oh, do we feed our kid or cut down this tree? Do we earn money? Or the, you know, we're not gonna have a choice soon. If we don't start making wise decisions and, and God doesn't put, we're relying on God to put proper leadership to guide humanity in the right direction. And th that leadership is all of us. We're all supposed to be leading the way through wise decisions by choosing God and Jesus and their way of love and their commandments of love to lead us, to be the leader. So until we do that and can close that gap, you know what I mean, of division and things like that, then we're gonna fall. Yeah, things are gonna keep getting worse. The population will increase, but because people, the oppression of the government, we're gonna have greed. Greed is going to destroy us. Their money, they're translating resources into money. Resources keep going down. Their money keeps going up. We can't eat their money. We can't, we're not going to be able to eat eat money to survive. You know what I mean? Like you cut, a, cut an apple tree down and turn it and turn that into paper and money. Can we eat that to the, and survive off that? Is that nutritious enough? No, so what's more important? The apple tree or the money? You know what I mean? And then like, so they use this money to get people to go grow more apple trees and stuff like this. But if it's like, if you're causing an imbalance, then you got environment going down, money going up. You know what I mean? And the money, we can't eat money. So you need to realize that it's like, yo, this mo the, the money's just supposed to be a motivator to get people to keep functioning and serving and maintaining. So we need a balance. We need the balance of like, you know, where people can make money in a proper living by helping the environment to thrive, like such as like conservation, paying conservational farmer farmers and things like that. So it's not you can't throw things out of balance in one or the other and think that you're going to thrive. That's just nonsense. So it's like it come, our very our very quality of life, everyone's quality of life and survival is relying on everyone to make decent choices. We're all connected. It's not like, you know, it's like it's like the ants and the grasshoppers. You can't totally oppress the ants and kill off all the ants and expect that you're going to have a bunch of ants to forage for you. It's nonsense. You know what I mean? So it's like it's like. Oh, it looks like, so what, what it comes down to is just doing your, be doing your best to treat everyone and love everyone as an equal servant, you know what I mean? So we can all th thrive together, like, you know, and you do your best to love and not break commandments, so, anyway, much love. But the thing is, is the Bible just paints a picture of, of the destruction of the wicked, but then it also paints a picture of the righteous thriving for thousand thousand years so so it's like but clearly if the, the word's gonna happen if it says it's gonna happen god's gonna make it happen you know and, and and it is going to happen and it's not just it's the people are going to choose that so it's like people are going to choose to go to destruction that the meteor of wormwood a, a meteor is going to hit the planet there's going to be famine there's going to be all these things that are described and it's going to wipe out 
who's going to get wiped out for not choosing properly and the evil and the wicked like such as viruses and things like that famine it says that it describes the, the certain amount of plagues it, it describes those plagues so, so it's like and so whether people like it or not thing god changes things he chooses things and he changes things based on our choices and how we change he if we adapt he, he adapts also so it's like you know but the word is going to come to pass that's why it says if he'll elijah will come if you don't take to him he will smite the earth so that still gives you the option of choosing but if, if you don't choose who he sends and what and the direction to follow the direction that he's sending to you through his servants then you're going to bring destruction upon yourself it's very plain and simple so it's like and you're not going to stop the promises of god to punish the wicked and and help the righteous thrive you're not going to you're just it's like you're, you're swimming against the current constantly you're you're in a battle that you're not go ever going to win because you don't understand that the, the you need to humble yourself and realize who's really in charge you can think yourself in charge and oppress the people, oppress the people, greed, 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 me, 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 instead of God, 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 like it's supposed to be, love, 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 like it's supposed to be, you're in a losing battle, and you're going to lose that battle every time because people care about survival. The, the, so that, and that very survival relies on us loving and serving God and all others as ourselves properly. So you're in a constant losing battle where you're just fighting, you're constantly swimming against the current instead of using it to your advantage. You know what I mean? And you, like, it doesn't make sense. So we need a conscious shift of people in positions uh, and people all over the world need to come to the conclusion where it's like, yo, we need, we need to realize that it's like, money shouldn't be our master dictating our actions it's like love and god and jesus are supposed to be exalted as our guide to guide us so love is supposed to be the master guiding us love and god is the master guiding us that's supposed to that's the only way to thrive and survive so that's why it's like you can't that's why it says god leads to life which love and good leads to life and money evil the world all that falling wickedness leads to death sin and leaves leads to death so it's not much of a it's not like it's supposed to be a no-brainer and, and that's the problem with um you know why that's why that other in the other scripture it says like you know then jesus is like it's not what is put into your body that defiles a man it is what that comes out of your body that defiles a man because your body, like I said, your body can, your body can, yes, it can be defiled from what you, it may appear that it can be defiled by what you put into your body, obviously, because like, you know, there's people that do homosexual acts with their mouths, and they put that into their mouths, and then they'll contract a disease, degrade, and defile their body, you know what I mean? So, which means sully and spoil their body. But, and then, like, same with, like, even kissing, you know, like, kissing someone can, you can contract, like, mono or any disease, so you're sullying and defiling your body. So it's like you can contract diseases and things like that. So it's like, and uh, g gluttony, if you put too much food or too much alcohol in your body or too much anything, then that can sully and spoil your body, you know what I mean? So, when, and then, like, same thing with the mark, when, like, so with, when Jesus was saying that, it's like, you put it tell it directs you in Revelation not to put the mark of a man which is six is the number of a man and the mark of the beast is six 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 it tells you not to put that in your body so or it will condemn you and it can condemn your body and your spirit to hell so so when he was speaking about putting things in your body he was he was the context of it is he was speaking to people who were ill who were prostitutes and lepers and had their bodies were spoiled at the moment but he was doing that to give them hope and let them know that it's like the son of man can forgive your son your sins heal your body and give you a new spirit and body so it was to give hope and that's why but th but then it says by your own judgments and by your own words and tongue will you be can you you may be condemned you know what i mean so it's a, that's why it says 
that if you offend the Son of Man, he, you may be forgiven, but it, you, the unforgivable sin is to blaspheme the Holy Spirit and offend the Holy Spirit, basically. So, uh, so, and that's of your own doing, with your own tongue. So that's why it describes the tongue as a fire, as a restless evil that can, the one little spark that you say can cause a huge fire, you know what I mean? It's basically saying like your tongue can condemn you or confessing, can your confessing of God and Jesus Christ can help them to help them to bring to give you redemption and that's why it says love can over love can cover many evils and things like that you know so it's like so because people can the body can be healed by God and through God and through faith in them and you know, that can save you that so it's what comes out of your body that defiles you and, and so it's not necessarily what you put in your body even though it's because that made that kind of appeared to, like a lie to me when I thought I'm like yo like you put people that do like sexual things with their body like they contract diseases and stuff like that defiles your body like that sullies your body and spoils your body so it's like yeah for a time you know what I mean so that so like there was still truth in like if you put poison in your body that sullies your body so I, I was like what that doesn't make sense saying that like that's why I asked God and Jesus and I prayed about it and then it's like and then it was revealed to me where it's like yeah like so because God and Jesus can heal the body and give forgive sins and give a new spirit, restore a spirit, restore a body through faith, if, if we have the faith in them, then that's why it is true what he said about it's not what you put in your body, it's what comes out of your, or what you put in your, it's not what you put in your mouth, it's what com it comes out of your mouth that defiles a man and a person. So, so it, in that way, it was true what he was saying. So, it was, and I thank him, thank God that he gave me that revelation, and, you know, all that revelation of thinking of this all came through, you know, all through Jesus and God. So it's like, so, yeah, so like that's, that, that brought understanding, and I hope it can help, help someone else, some of, uh, some of you come to understanding that it's like fear of God Fear of going against God preserves, pres preserve, can preserve and save our spirit from going against them and condemning ourselves and going to hell. Because if you're fearing that punishment and then, and going against them and others and being condemned to hell, that preserves you, then you won't do it. You know, so like fear is, and then, so fear is necessary. It's very necessary and important because we all slip up and do sin. So when, when we do, the fear of that punishment convicts us and then that's what brings the repentance and the change you know so if you're just like oh i don't fear god loves me anyway even in my, when i'm sinning that's deceiving yourself because god doesn't love doesn't yeah he still loves us even though we're all sinners and have done evil and he proved that by sacrificing and sending jesus even though we're all evil and have all sinned you know so he proved that his love is unconditional and he still even loves the evil though you know it's like he loves us evil sinners still you know what i mean but that's not to be confused with that he loves you and he loves the evil itself the sin itself and when we're committing those sins and evils ourselves you know what i mean like and against him and ourselves and others so because he doesn't that's you know so it's like because and like evil does not serve god or anyone it doesn't even serve the, those who are who are partaking in it. So they're actually going against themselves and all others and going to destruction. So so I just wanted to point that out because it's like people can deceive themselves and if you don't have that fear of going against them, then people can be like, oh, I can just in a way, I'm already forgiven, uh, no big deal, I can just do whatever I want. And it's like, yeah, that's not true. They're not free of consequence, you can't. You will go to destruction and disease and destruction you'll, uh, you'll sully your body and your spirit uh, you will be spoiled and that like you know so that's not like you know people sometimes attribute like spoiled to being a good thing like oh i'm very spoiled <laughs> it's like spoiled not a good thing that's kind of like isaiah breaking isaiah 520 like to be spoiled like spoiled is a bad thing so it's like you're not supposed to try to make like the wicked into into good and you know like so I just want to point that out. Another another saying that I thought it was kind of funny that I caught the other day that 
uh, someone said was, oh, I'm scared to death. And, like, that didn't even make sense. I was like, that's not true. Like, you weren't scared to death, like, because you're still alive, clearly. And it's like, so the only people that could say that, and that would be a true saying, is if you had a near-death experience and you, like, died and then you came back. And it's like, yeah, you were scared to death and you came back, you know? So it's like, either way, it's just one of those, some of those sayings, I'm just like, that's not true. You know, I brought it to their attention right away, but... I was like, there's some sayings like that, you know, like how I said in the in my previous video that, oh, but men loved darkness rather than the light. And it's like, no, they didn't. You can't love darkness because darkness isn't love and love isn't darkness and you can't make them. You can try to, but that's what devils try to do. They try to love darkness, turn love into darkness. And then the other saying, oh, God hates evil. That's like, it, like, it says God is love. So like, that's like saying love hates evil. So it's like saying that love hates evil and that God hates and is evil. But it's clearly untrue, so those words don't belong together. So that saying doesn't make sense. So it's like there's some things that they weren't... You can tell, like... You can tell what they... Some people can tell what they mean and interpret what they mean by it. But, like I said in the previous video, like, lovingly rebukes evil is a way better way to say it. It's not as confusing and it's true. Saying God hates evil is untrue. And then, like... And then saying that... Uh, because that's that can be taken like God hates and is evil and then so and then same with saying love the darkness love the dark rather than the light they love God uh, men love the dark rather than the light no they didn't they tried to you can't love you can't turn love into hate and light into darkness love into the devil or like God into the devil good into evil you can't you can't they're opposites so that's what it's telling you to not do, and you're not supposed to make them equal either, or try to, so I just want to point that out. This isn't just a song about balling money cars, hoes, and how I live illegal. This is a song to let you know, show you how I'm fucking sick of people. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of being tired and sick of people hoping they'll help me be admired and quick. You really think you sick or all you do is talk and lie like a chick? You can all blow, swallow, sit and lie on my dick. Cause that's not possible, like using a match to set fire to brick. Cause I'm the sickest, get this, that's why I writ this, spit this shit. Just sit, just witness, the sickness is a hitches with this. Sick of you, cause I'm sick of you. How I'm so sick of you, sick of true Don't care if you think you sick or two Jay's love, this is all I think I do This fly is ever, forever the king Not just the guy that's clever Don't think I'm trying, never so sick Can't even die to get better Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone, that's why I'm sick of people Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being Wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone I mean, I'm sick of people Yeah, I'm sick of smoking Sick of drinking Sick of joking Being broken When I'm sick of thinking Sick of writing Sick of rapping Sick of fighting Sick of scrapping Sick of feeling Sick of hurting Sick of you Dealing with a sicker person Who's sick of people Sick of lying Sick of evil Sick of trying Sick of living Sick of dying Sick of giving Sick of hiving To work, I'm sick of going Cause everything's sick of written I'm sick of throwing Sick of spitting Yeah, I'm sick of Getting sicker and sicker, being sick of hidden Sick of not getting the chance I deserve Sick of being the man with the words Sick of girls hitting on me when they got a man I'm sick of people acting like I don't know what I'm doing When I'm sick I got a plan To be and get sicker and sicker, God I am Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone, that's why I'm sick of people Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone, not me, I'm sick of people Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone, that's why I'm sick of people Sick of people fighting, hurting, sick of people killing Sick of people not loving, sick of people not chilling People hating, being wrong, I'm thinking we're equal People think they're better than everyone, not me, I'm sick of people
many hits does it take to rise? How long are you gonna hate the spies? How many pain, sadnesses, aches and cries? How much can a heart take before it breaks and dies? How many falls does it take to rise? Really shake your guys and awake your eyes. How many times do they have to take your lies before you love the truth and hate their lies? How many songs does it take to rise? Be seen and be viewed as great and wise. Blow up and become great in size. Keep on talking, talking you confusing Nothing but confusion, discover the solution Love is the solution, love and evolution Love is evolution, JC the pop for execution Talking is amusing, so I'm talking, it's amusing So you rock it, rock it, and you use it Shocking, you just lose it, mock it, and abuse it I gave it my all to rest a baby, what call? Brains are too small, set the world on fire Jesus gonna come back and rain on us all Straight first 
Ghost breaking and holding and righteous I'm repenting Fighters, bombers and addicts Drama and static Soldiers, killers, illness with magic The whole world is getting wild Pedophiles and get a child Devils and demons Rebels and screaming Wicked schemes Oh sick and mean Drinking fiends You hate the police Changers and faithful Evil and hateful Unthankful people Rude and ungrateful But lustful and spiteful Satan and disciples Those yapping off Wrath and sloth Genocide Defending lies And you're right Same side In the pain out of the dirt In the rain From this earth It's insane I would just in your brain, how you deal with all the hate that is real and all the pain that you feel Take it away from you Cause nothing is worse than the unloving and curse or for whatever is worth I could just take it away from you You were there from the start and don't care in the heart that wanna tear you apart I could just take it away from the Sleezes, foos and diseases, bruises and lesions Unbelievers of Jesus Christ, blasphemy Just money, smoking, misery, cults, blame Guilts, faults, mocking, shame, not walking, lame Bullies, vicious, hurting, malicious What's daunting, taunting, haunting, flaunting and wanting Bad intentions, mad inventions, sadness, intentions, aggressions and stress Confusions, unrest, solutions and mess Contusions and pests, suppressors, crime Wasting time, madness and weapons, sadness, depression Division, troubles, lack of vision, struggles the hurt and the pain out of the dirt in the rain from this earth, it's insane. I would just take you away from in your brain. How you deal with all the hate that is real and all the pain that you feel. I would take it away from you. Cause nothing is worse than the unloving and curse. So for whatever it's worth, if I could just take you away from you. You were there from the start and don't care. In the heart that wanna tear you apart. I would just take you away from you. the hurt in the pain out of the dirt in the rain. From this earth, it's insane. I would just take you away from in your brain. How you deal with all the hate that is real and all the pain that you feel. I would take it away from you. Cause nothing is worse than the unloving and curse. So for whatever it's worth, I could just take you away from you. You were there from the start and don't care. In the heart that wanna tear you apart, I would just take you the pain out of the dirt in the rain from this earth it's insane I would just take you away from in your brain how you deal with all the hate that is real and all the pain that you feel I would take it away from you cause nothing is worse than the unloving and curse so for whatever it's worth I could just take you away from you were there from the start and don't care in the heart that wanna tear you apart I would just take you away from you